about the state budget proposal is Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this now kicks off negotiation time. Lawmakers have until June 15th to kind of work on this proposal. What do you think sticks and stays, and what is going to be uh, flexible here in this budget? So a lot of the proposals that the governor put out are ones that the Assembly, at least, Democrats in the Assembly, have been working on for a few years. So I think there was a lot of uh, a breathing a sigh of relief when we talk about things like the second year of free community college, when we talk about expanding paid family leave, um, a real investment in child child care, homelessness, housing. So it's things that we have um, tried to get in the budget under Governor Brown, and um, maybe his priorities were a little different. So this is going to be exciting to see how that kind of works. But we have a process. So they'll go through hearings over the next few months. Um, in May, the governor, of course, will, will re-release his budget as it may revise, and then we'll see how far we apart there. But I think what we're going to settle in on is a lot of the details. For example, the governor um, yesterday, it's something that's really popular. He extended, he said, we're going to extend paid family leave in California to six months. It's currently at six weeks. Well, that's a great idea, and it's a great talking point. Right? All of us think, all of us, especially who have had kids, like staying home for six months is appropriate. The, the problem with that is right now our paid family leave program um, at six weeks is being underutilized. And that's because if you take it, you get about 60 to 70 percent of your income replacement. And so low income women, middle income women who don't have a lot in savings, they can't live on 60 or 70 percent. You can't live for six weeks. You definitely can't li li live for six months. And then you have to pay the taxes on that once you, you know, once the next tax yeah. season rolls around. Well, and, um, and right now we're all paying for this. It's a payroll tax. So the, sa the, the majority of the folks who are paying for it can't actually afford to take it. So we introduced a bill yesterday to say, um, let's do 100 percent income replacement on certain um, levels of income to ensure that everybody can utilize this program that we're all paying for. So it's great to talk about six months, but you know when we have so many low-wage workers, minimum-wage workers, um, even middle-income workers who can't take the six weeks, we've got to fix some of these proposals. I but think if you're a support. business owner, that's a nightmare. Six months, not having an employee that you train, that you don't have on staff, that you're not getting any efficiency out of, that seems to me as a small business owner would be a horrific thing to have to face. Well, that's the other thing that doesn't line up is our protections to keep your job don't go for six months and they don't go in all jobs. So that's another detail that, you know, again, when, when you release something and it sounds so good and something we believe and it's a value, I think most Americans support, definitely most Californians, um, then it's like, how do we actually get this to, to be worth something that works both for the family and for the businesses as well? Yeah, we talk about that with, with minimum wage and the increases as well. It's it's a double-edged sword. It's really hard on small business owners. We've heard that over and over again as the minimum wage continues to go up. But then you have a lot of minimum wage workers who are saying, I live in California. I can't afford housing, and I now can't afford my rent. So, and I think sometimes with minimum wage as well, in all these programs, at first it seems like a shock to the, to, to the system. Um, but it's amazing. The minimum wage increases really haven't um, shown an effect on our small businesses as far uh, as far as um, minimizing their ability to operate in California. What it has done is shown that you continue to put money into people's pockets who spend it. So the thing about a minimum wage worker is they're not putting that money away in a, a savings account. They can't. It's all being put back into our economy, into those small businesses, into large businesses, into expenditures um, that help the economy. So it, it's recycling that money. And again, with paid family leave, people get a little concerned. Number one, it's not the employer paying for it. It is the worker. But you know, over a series of time. But number two, um, it makes for a better workforce, right? We all know any of us, in fact, who have been especially young moms know, you know, you, you go back to work right away. All you're thinking about is, is, is your baby okay? Um, you know, do I need to go pump? Is there other problems going on? Do I need to care my child care provider? So having that extra time at home, I think, is really important. We've just got to figure out how we do it together. Let me back up a little bit because we, we have a new budget, new governor. Mm -hmm. He's proposed all of this stuff. And there's a government shutdown at the federal level. A lot of the money that comes to California comes from the federal government. There's a big unknown there. This, sure. there. There potentially could be a huge gap. How do you think that the Assembly and the governor are going to address that? Well, you know, what most people don't realize is we actually send more to the federal government than we get back. Uh, so I don't think we're as concerned about that. What we are concerned about is the 30,000 federal workers in California who are, you know, today without a paycheck. And the governor addressed a couple things. He said, you absolutely comply for...
insurance, and that's something a lot of people didn't realize. And he said they'll be expedited, in fact, in their claims, mm -hmm. so they can get unemployment insurance. He said for those who are technically working, like the TSA agents, you can't have unemployment insurance when you're working, so it's kind of a weird situation. He's looking for ways we can do um, some kind of no-interest loan to TSA workers who will get paid back, um, but when, you know, and, and that doesn't help to pay rent and food. So he's looking at those proposals as well, but he said yesterday, absolutely, if, if, you're, if your job has if you've been furloughed um, and you're not getting a paycheck that you can apply for unemployment insurance so that helps and we're seeing a lot of businesses now all of a sudden step up and say hey if you are a federal worker that's being furloughed we have some assistance for you which is great to see them doing it in, on their own to help them out I wanted to get to some of the the mm -hmm. bills that you're bringing forward yeah. that's being called me too bills yeah. um, assembly bills 171 and 170 can you can you describe those briefly for us? so there's two bills I'm doing this year um, last year we made some progress in the me too movement if you will but that progress really centered around kind of corporate boards, um, corporate executives, Hollywood folks, some things that like if you have a lawyer, um, a, a lot of money, you're, you can figure out a way to not be retaliated against. What these bill does is it really extends that to people who don't have an attorney. So, so one effect is um, is the presumption of retaliation. What we found, we did hearings across the state, what we found with low-wage and middle-income women is sometimes they complain about uh, sexual harassment and they don't want to sue. That's not their point. They just want their supervisor to make sure that they know, to, to take track of it. So we, t we heard one waitress who talked about a line cook, right? So she goes and complains to her supervisor that the line cook's grabbing her butt. Like, nobody should have to deal with that. She's not looking to sue. She just doesn't want to have to work with him. Well, she got transferred to a different um, time period, not him. She got her hours cut. This happens every day in, in America. And, and without actually filing a lawsuit, you have no protection. So what R says is if, there, if you're retaliated against, not after telling a supervisor in any way that you've been sexually harassed, that the presumption is, it could be proven wrong, that you're being, re, you're being retaliated against for um, for basically trying to just have a workplace that's safe for you. So um, that's one of the bills, and the other is a joint liability. We have so many contractors right now where the, the major employer hires a contractor. Um, the major employer says, I don't know what these contractors do. It's not my problem. Um, this happens a lot in hotels. What we don't realize is hotel um, maids are often contracted out. That's a contractor. And so the hotel will say, well, it's not our problem if you know some guest exposed himself to you and we want to kind of bridge that and say yeah it actually is it's in your hotel we've got to have liability all the way up so those are the two bills we're doing this year all right well it's a new year new budget new laws we'll see how it all plays out thanks so much for being here Thank assembly you. member lorena gonzalez with us this morning here on good morning san diego thanks so much for being with us